nominating committee, all independent directors. Okay, here we go. Duties and responsibilities. Reviewing and advising the board on the nomination and appointment of directors. This here is the nominating committee is charged with this. Okay? So that's your job as the nominating committee. As chair of the nominating committee, that's your task. How do we get directors on the board? What skills and competencies do we need? Given our business, our industry, our strategy. And if you're really good, given the weakness of our CEO. Every CEO has a weakness. And they try to hide it. Your CEO has a weakness. How do you compensate for that to make the CEO, to, to make sure the CEO doesn't make a multi-million dollar mistake? So what do we need and who do we have? Step one, what do we need? Step two, who do we have? And what do we need is not here and now, it's three, four, five, six, seven years out. And it could be three or four bullet points, it could be twelve. I've seen all kinds of permutations and combinations of this. But it's important that you do it and you impose a level of rigor, but you do it in an inclusive, transparent way. So I still interview directors to this day where they say, Richard, we don't understand how the nominating committee works. Joe comes, he's proposed to the board. Well, how did Joe come? Where's our matrix? So the matrix can't be shielded from the rest of the directors. The matrix needs to be disclosed to the board. In fact, it should be informed by the board. This just shouldn't be some person in the back office creating this matrix because you're not going to get buy-in. And if you're skilled, which you are, you're going to deliberately choose competencies to shape the outcome. So the matrix needs to be disclosed. And then what's happening now with leading edge companies is they're disclosing the matrix to shareholders. Shareholders want to see how directors are chosen and on what basis. So you can't have these bullet points now where we, we select the director on the following items. Integrity, business judgment, blah, blah, blah. That is meaningless. No, no, no. Directors want to see what, what do you need? What are your competencies? And how many directors possess skill or expert application in each of these competencies? I want to know who, which directors are competent in which areas. Just tell me. How many possess three, four, five, six directors possess skill or expert application? That's the job of the nominating committee. In fact, that's probably the most important thing the nominating committee does. The other thing the nominating committee does is it appoints, it recommends to the board the appointment of the chairs of committees and the chair of the board. The nominating committee recommends the appointment to the board of the chairs of committees, membership of committees, and chair of the board. 